Hello everybody, welcome to another Merry Me review. Today we have a very charming little game that I've been playing for a little bit now. The name is uh I know I know I know I know I know Anodyne 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 Dad Anodyne. Anodyne, I think. Uh, yes, I think thanks to uh, a little uh, NPC in the game, I know the name rhymes with an ode to dying or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, um, like I was saying before, before I was struggling with the name, which I probably uh, I butcher already. Let's just face it. Uh, Anodyne is a little game that is currently on Steam. By the time that this review is, uh, by the time that you guys are watching this review, the game should be out. Uh, now, I had a review copy. Obviously, I had some uh, restrictions to how long I had to play. Don't worry, I played it on my own for a, you know a long time to get a feel of the game. So, why don't we talk about it? And um, I'll tell you what I think about the game. So let's move on. <laughs> And the game in question is Anodyne 2 Return to Dust. As you guys can see over there, there's the game running. Um, it's a very charming little game. As you guys can see by the intro to uh, the game, it's a, it's a game with a little bit of a retro feel to it. And that's what they are trying to appeal to. And uh, I think the game lives and dies by that appeal. And I'll tell you what I mean about that in a second. But Anodyne 2 Return to Dust, as the title says, is a sequel. But like the developers said at the beginning of the game, there's a little title screen that tells us that regardless of um, this game being a sequel, well, technically it's not. The little uh, developer card says that even though it's Anodyne 2, it's not related to the first game, and you can play this one without any context to the first one, which is fantastic because we're gonna take uh, that recommendation and play this game as our first game. So, what is Anodyne 2? Well, Anodyne 2 is a little bit of a mixture of two types of game. If we go back and check Anodyne 1, uh, you can see that it's a little bit of a Zelda type game, like a, a little bit of a 8-bit, 16-bit six, type of game, whether you walk around. Um, that type of gameplay is in this game, but as you can see by the title screen, uh, that's not all there is to it. Uh, the game is divided in two sections. There's a 3D section and a 2D section. The 3D section of the game, it is very reminiscent of all PlayStation 1 games. Not even PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1 games. Like, it, it, it's reminiscent of that old era of uh, video games. Um, as soon as I booted the game, it gave me this nostalgia feel to it, to an era that I long forgotten about, and it, it was a really hype feeling, right? Damn, not gonna lie, I love the graphics, it brings me back to the past. If you're an old fan <laughs> like me, watching how the text scroll down and the graphics, it's like, oh my god, I'm a child again. But I'm not. I'm still an old f But I like the feeling to feel like a child again. <laughs> Let's read this. But, um... The game does also contain some of the 3D, you know, flaws of the era. I'm not gonna lie, the game is a little slow at the beginning. And like I said in my introduction, this game lives and dies by the nostalgia. So if you remember those games, and you, you will remember those games were also a little bit, um, you know, could have a little bit of a slow star, you know, it was a different era. Uh, the gameplay of 3D uh, games were not perfected yet, so they have their flaws, and this game actually reenacts some of those flaws as well. So, if you can't 
look past those flaws, at least when it comes to the 3D sections of the game, uh, you might be turned away by it. The game itself, when it comes to the 3D sections, is just ma uh, mainly for exploration. But before I jump ahead and describe what how the game is, let's let's talk a little bit of a story. First of all, you are a nano cleaner. Uh, you start the game inside of an egg. Apparently, you haven't been born yet, and that's the tutorial area. In the tutorial area, you find yourself walking around uh, the gods. Well, not so much as the gods or deities. I'm not quite sure. It was I I, I was it wasn't quite explained to me at the beginning. Uh, what exactly they were, but I'm pretty sure at this moment I'm gonna put some squid caps or probably videos explaining what they are. Figure with beautiful boys. <clears throat> there she is! Still a little woozy, are you? Don't worry, it's natural to feel disoriented when you first gain consciousness. Child, your name is Nova, and you're an extraordinary creature with the unique ability to shrink to microscopic size. It will come in quite handy, as you'll soon see. My name is... Palsai? Palsai? Pal you know what? Call me P. Not... Not... Don't double that, though. And I'm here with... Uh, what the f***? <coughs> this mother <coughs> Alright. Together, we'll serve as your caretakers and your guys. Don't ask us to pronounce our names ever again, though. I swear. Oh god, the shield. There you go, it's the fucking <laughs> shield hero. And, and I press the button. Anybody else? Okay. That sweet voice definitely lifts. We'll fight for you. Who's this? The musician. Dedicated songwriter. Buy my mixtape. <laughs> Awkward around kids. Kind of a nerd. <laughs> but would you buy? The foreign strong, definitely. Super strong. Mummies? Mama! Caretakers and guys. Right? But aside from that, uh, they explain to you your mothers, uh, or I don't know, is there one that's a, a male with your mom and dad? I don't know. But your mother. This deity explains to you your role, what you need to do, and sends you into the world, well, not the world, the egg, to learn how to move, how to play, and your mission in this world is, first of all, let's get out of the egg, and then go into the real world and get rid of dust. Dust is this substance that is just, it's just dust, it's just dust. Apparently dust enters into people's bodies. People could be taking a little... Let's, like, let's call them people, but they're like different creatures that live in this world. Uh, you have to find certain uh, individuals that have been affected by dust. You go towards them, talk to them, feel that there's something wrong with them, shoot them, because that's how you help people, by shooting them. And then you shrink and enter their bodies. And that's where the second part of the gameplay starts. The 8, uh, the 16-bit, uh, the 2D section of the game. Uh, I really enjoy the 2D sections of this game. There are some parts that have amazing music. And I gotta say that the music, uh, there's some levels where the music is just fantastic. But 
the gameplay when you are in the 2D sections revolve around you exploring a dungeon, uh, sucking up enemies, shoot them into other enemies, destroying them, sucking some diamond dust thingy that they might drop. That's your health. And your whole purpose is to reach to the end of the level and suck up a big pile of dust that is affecting the individual uh, that you're trying to save. Obviously, before you reach that part, you have to fight a boss that, you know, you have to defeat him by sucking up something and throwing it at him. And there's, don't worry, there's plenty of objects around in the, in the, um, in the battleground that you can use as weapons and you can shoot them towards him. Uh, every boss has like a theme accordingly to the theme of you know the dungeon so you might find a point where there's like a tongue in the middle of a battle blocking your path between you and the boss that to be honest to me that, that was helpful instead of harmful but hey so and again every dungeon like a like a Zelda game has a theme and you have to solve puzzles around it uh, like it's like that level that I told you about that has like this amazing music that I really like had a little shadow puzzle that you have to move around and the and your shadow moves with you and you have to uh, use that shadow to activate puzzles it is really enjoyable the puzzles are definitely great um but I guess like my main complaint about the game is the 3D sections. Uh, I mean, I like the exploration, especially when I get to the to the upper level, past the city. Um, I, I don't want to talk too much about you know story and what you do in the city and what you have to go uh, of the city. I don't want to spoil anything if you guys are interested in playing the game. Yeah, so when it comes to the 3D sections of the game, it's mainly exploration, trying to, you know, uh, gather clues to where's your next target, going to the target, activate the 2D sections of the game, complete the puzzles, and, you know, absorb the giant dust piece that is afflicting the character, and by doing so, you acquire a card. These cards have, you know, a little bit of a, you know, text you know, a flavor text uh, in regard of uh, every character you have encountered. You collect those to advance. At the beginning of the game, you're going to need four to increase the amount of dust that you can uh, store into the main container in the city. By doing so, that I will allow you to, you know, obviously put more dust and you will be able to access the elevator and you'll be able to leave the city where, like, pretty much most of the exploration of the game takes place. Um, the, the city is a secondary tutorial. Uh, so, literally the action, the main action of the game starts after you leave the city. Um, but, uh... When it comes to the 3D sections of the game, it comes with a little bit of the downsides of older games. I, there are some wonky areas where you'll find yourself, you know, uh, having a little bit of problems with mobility. You might uh, randomly kill yourself by jumping off certain places. There's some areas with fixed camera angles. I don't like those. Um, if, but. It feels like there's not much to do when it comes to the 3D section. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy the game itself. It's just that I wish there was a little bit more to do in the 3D sections. Uh, I get it. The, the the meat of the game is in the 2D, uh, in the 16-bit dungeons. But it feels like, so What what's the point of the 3D section, right? But, uh, you know, later on, you know, the 3D sections get a little bit better. Uh, but still, the best part of the game is the puzzles, and that goes back to the first game, which was mainly just a 2D game, a 16-style Zelda-like game. So, I see what they're doing, they're trying to upgrade, but I would love to do a little bit more with the 3D sections of the game. The game is definitely charming, I'm not gonna lie. The game... Uh, I had a lot of fun with it, um, but again, I had a little problems with it in a way because 
there's certain areas, as you can see, the, the polygonal uh, creature that we have here is a representation, and that, that's the nano cleaner. You're a glorified um, uh, uh, mate that you have to go around and vacuuming people. But as you can see, the polygons is like straight up a great representation of what games used to be. So back in the day when I was a kid, I couldn't play games for too long because it would give me a headache. This is the way that they look and the, how the camera moves and stuff like that. And I haven't felt that in many years till I play this game. Like two weeks ago, I was playing this game to advance through it so I can actually make this review. And I had to stop because I was heading, getting a headache because all the movement of the camera. You can turn into a car at one point and you just run around. So, so yeah, it, it, definitely this game is a great representation of games of the past. So, yeah, so it comes with the good sides and the downsides. Definitely this game feels like uh, an old game and it feels like it would be a, a, a hidden gem from the past. If I didn't know that this game is actually recently made, it was recently released. And so <laughs> it is a very interesting feeling that it's giving me. So when I say that the game lives and die by the nostalgia, it it's definitely comes down to you and how you feel about games of this type. Um, I don't know if I could make somebody that, you know, is happy that the industry has evolved to a point where we don't have to deal with, you know, old school problems. Might have a little bit of a problem with this game. It does have its downsides, right? But if you are into, you know, old games and you like that nostalgia feeling, this might be down your alley. I might suggest it. Um, check some videos. Uh, check my video. Because, uh, I mean, as soon as this review is out, probably I'll, uh, my, my, my first playthrough is going to be down there in the description. Um, it's just going to be the first look, by the way. I didn't stream the whole thing. Like I said, there were some restrictions before the game was released. I couldn't stream the whole thing. So, but at least it's the first part. And if you like what you see, you know, you give it a try. But, again, it's not for everybody. Definitely this game has... Uh, and, uh, you know, a certain demographic that will appeal to. So, uh, it's not a game that will be like, everybody should play it, you're gonna enjoy it, just jumping. No, uh, fair warning. Um, this targets a, speci a special demographic. So, if you're not into the whole retro game, especially games from, like, that look like PlayStation 1 games, you might have a problem with it. And so, fair warning on that one. But if you're really into very nostalgic old school games, like 2Ds or like this polygonal um, uh, work that should be in a museum, go ahead and give it a try. Um, it is it is fun. It is fun. It's slow at the beginning. Fair warning. Yeah, there's some mechanics that I even haven't explained yet. I, I mean, I feel like there were some mechanics that were put there to just, just like they just threw ideas in there to see if they stick um, to add to the 3D sections because they feel like, you know, the 3D sections needed work. So it feels like they just throw a lot of ideas into the 3D sections to see what sticks because definitely the 2D parts of the game pretty good. I love them. I enjoy them quite a bit. It's, for example, you don't only have to explore. Find your target. Enter the individual to help clean all, you know, solve the puzzle and stuff. But before you can even enter the dungeon, you have to play this, like, dance dance revolution type of game where there's some arrows that comes towards you and you have to press the D-pad or the analog stick, however you want to play it. I played it old school, so I was using the D-pad. So... You have to match the symbols with your direction so you can actually walk towards the your target. And later on, they even add more stuff like a, a black arrow where you don't press anything or you're going to get hit. And when you get hit, you get pushed back. Um, it might be fun. You might find that fun. But to me, I, I find it like padding. Because I 
definitely just wanted to jump into the dungeon. I just wanted to have fun in, in the dungeon, and, and that was like... It's not even that hard, that's the thing. So it's like... Alright, fair enough. We'll do this before we jump in. But there's definitely some lore to the game. I don't want to spoil much to it. Uh, every uh, individual that you have to help has a reason uh, why they act the way they act. They had they had a dream. They want to do things, and the dust is causing them to behave in a you know in a s different way, uh, having certain conflicting feelings towards their lives. And you just gotta jump in there and help them. Um, again, I don't want to talk much about it because definitely. That is part of the experience of the game. Uh, it, it, the charm of the game is a little bit of, you know, of the lore. Regardless that, you know, to, for you to get to that lore, it takes a little bit. I mean, it, it is a little slow. But anyway. So, Anodyne, I could say that is a, a very interesting game. Uh, I have fun with it. Uh, it's definitely not for everybody. And uh, I will suggest checking out some videos. I mean, like my videos, you know what I mean. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm just pointing that out there. You just want to go check it out. But um, yeah, um, fairly enjoyable, definitely. I uh, wouldn't recommend it for everybody. Definitely a little bit slow. The 3D sections require a little bit of work, but uh, it's, it's still enjoyable. And all in all, I. He's a very enjoyable game. If anything, play it for the music and the puzzles. The puzzles are really fun. I, I, I definitely enjoyed it. It was a very charming little game. And it gave me this nostalgia blast that it made me feel things that I haven't felt in a while. Including the dizziness while playing video games. I haven't felt that in a while. But here we are. So those were my thoughts on Anodyne. Anodyne. Anodyne, an an Anodyne, Anodyne 2, Return to Dawes. The game is quite charming, um, so just give it a look. Um, but yeah. Anyway, if this if you find this helpful, please give us a follow on all the social media that you will find in the description. Remember, go check us check out Amiri Media on Twitter and. Facebook on the Twitch and every link that you will find in the description and like I said before you can always check me out on my streams on Twitch and you know and on YouTube if you want to check the games that I play on for the reviews so without anything else to say I have to say well have a good night I'll see you guys next time and go play some games go play some Anodyne Anodine Anodine Dong, dang, ding, dong, dong. Anodyne. That. Yes. Go play that. Uh, but again, it is an acquired taste. Go, go check it out with caution. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time with the next game that I'll review. Whatever that might be. I still don't know. I, I don't know. It's like. I'm talking in the past. Maybe future Luigi will know what, what you're talking about. But anyway, I'll see you guys on the next review. Enjoy the rest of your night, day, morning, or whatever time you guys are watching this video. And you guys take care. I'll see you guys next time. Toodles!